pandemic is an unprecedented public health and economic crisis, which has greatly disrupted our lives. But children in particular have had their worlds turned upside down. Visits with friends and extended family have been replaced by video conferencing and in-person activities replaced with video games, social media, video services, and other digital activities. And as a result, kids' screen time has doubled during this pandemic. And you just told me that, uh, Madam Chair, on the elevator, and I didn't realize it was that much, twice. As this subcommittee has heard time and time again, Consumers online face manipulative advertising, disinformation, harassment, dark pattern manipulation, and privacy intrusions. For adults, these dangers are extremely hard to manage, but for children, such practices are downright predatory. Children do not possess the same levels of cognitive development to defend themselves, and are often uniquely vulnerable to any negative effects. The online world can affect children's mental and physical health, uh, growing bodies of research confirm the link between increased digital media use and depression and higher instances of addiction, anxiety, sleep deprivation, and obesity. And we also have seen harmful behaviors such as cyberbullying increase during the pandemic. Unfortunately, many companies are well aware that children are spending more time online, and they're taking advantage of that by proactively targeting, manipulating, and monetizing our children. For example, some internet platforms, app developers, and content creators propagate addiction by design through sophisticated, thoroughly tested means to keep kids on their sites and extract money. Common elements include pressuring in-app purchases without parental consent, so-called freemium apps that tease paid versions, and gamification marketing, where gameplay elements themselves are used to promote purchases or products. And then there's influencer advertising, Madam Chair. People on social media with lots of followers post photos and videos of themselves using a product, but kids and sometimes even adults don't understand that those people are often paid for for those posts. And young children frequently have no idea that the video they're watching is someone opening a new toy is actually meant to sell the toy. So online advertising spending is now the largest of any medium, and spending on digital ads specifically targeting children is expected to reach $1.7 billion this year. Most apps directed to or used by children contain ads, including 95% of the apps aimed at kids under five. Ads for toys or junk food are commonplace, but far too often kids are exposed to ads for tobacco products, alcohol, violent movies, or video games, or, or other age inappropriate content. And it's deeply concerning that business models online continually seek to maximize engagement to increase revenue at the expense of children's health. Many parents try to balance the benefits of internet use, such as social connections and educational apps, while trying to limit the possible negative effects. But many parents are overwhelmed and even their best efforts are not enough to protect their kids against sophisticated predatory practices. And the pandemic has made it painfully clear this problem is not gonna fix itself, nor will the harmful activities targeting our kids stop when the pandemic is behind us. Despite laws to protect children's privacy, data collection and tracking of children is disturbingly prevalent. Many apps for kids on mobile devices are notorious for collecting personal information, and their personal information is then bought and sold, resulting in targeting advertising designed to influence and manipulate children even more. So Congress granted the FTC rulemaking authority under the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act or COPPA precisely so it could update the safeguards for children online as technology advanced. And the internet has experienced a sea change since the last updates to the COPPA rule. I know that Ms. Castor mentioned this with her legislation. And it's clear that those rules are out of date and no longer provide the intended protection for our kids. So while the FTC has started the process of updating its rules under COPPA, we also must examine whether the statute should be updated and whether the practices targeting children should be regulated. We can't leave it all to parents. The challenges children face online existed before the pandemic, but they've only gotten worse. And it's gonna to continue to increase after the pandemic is behind us unless we do something about it. So I just wanted to thank you, uh, Madam Chair, and also uh, uh, um, Kathy Castor because uh, of the fact that you are having this hearing, drawing attention to this with the legislation. Uh, look forward to this expert panel on what's a very important topic. Thank you.